And just before we get into the video, um, something I should have been doing a lot more up till now, and that is just asking you guys out there, if you enjoy what you're looking at, if you are if you like what I'm doing, go down below, uh, click on the, the like page, subscribe to my, my channel, and uh, by all means, please click on that little notification bell. If uh, that way you guys get, uh, uh, get alerted when I do get more new content up. I usually try to do the what's on my desk uh, monthly update beginning of the month and I usually try to get a video or a series of videos released um, by the 15th, the middle of the month. So whether that's going to be a uh, tips and tricks video or an aviation history video or my time lapse videos of the previous model builds that I've got done or uh, an air show video or you know um, some of my new product review videos I'll be doing so I'm going to try to get something posted uh, by the middle of the month so uh, please if you're enjoying this subscribe like and click that notification bell let's move on to the video okay welcome back guys we're at the desk uh, for another um, one of my model reviews uh, this one is going to be a um, Edward P39 Air Cobra um, and so it's this boxing here uh, the P39Q now um, this was one of Edward's first um, in-house kits uh, so this one came out in 2001 I believe the original molding came out in like 99 2000 uh, and this was one of their like slightly later boxings with just uh, a set of different set of decals. But for one of Edward's early kits, it is still an amazing kit. So this kit is now effectively 20 years old, uh, but it is still one of the better kits on the market. And I'm pretty sure, and I would put my money down, that it is the best P39 kit in 148 on the market um, at the moment. So we'll take a quick look at it. Uh, so we'll start off, I'll just put the box aside and we'll go through everything that comes in the box. Uh, so this is the Profipack box, which is Edward's sort of internal name for their fully loaded kits. Uh, and you'll see in a minute um, all the stuff that's included in this. I got this relatively inexpensive. I believe I bought this probably back in, oh my God, 2010, I believe. I went on a trip to Poland with my wife and I'm pretty sure I bought this um, in the hobby shop in Poland. Um, yeah. Definitely bought this one in the hobby shop in Poland. Did not pair very much for it at the time. Um, probably less than $20 Canadian, maybe $30 Canadian um, at the time for this kit. So for what it was, it was relatively inexpensive. So like I said, I'll put it aside and I will go through um, everything that's included in the kit. We'll start off with the plastic sprues and then we'll look at the instructions and then the decals and then all of the extra bits that come with it. Uh, so everything, uh, all the plastic itself comes uh, in a, a single bag, uh, it is uh, very well packaged, so we'll start off with, um, let's see if they're lettered, I can go in the proper order, I don't think they are. Uh, so we'll start off with this one here, uh, so it includes, uh, I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can get a better look at things. So this one here includes both fuselage halves as well as some of the extra parts you need uh, to do different versions. Uh, so you get uh, a bomb, um, these are different upper cowling parts depending on what weapons were included, part of the cockpit, you get instrument panel, very detailed, um, very detailed instrument panel there. So you can see it's got quite a bit of, uh, uh, there's no actual instrument faces per se, but you do have every dial um, clearly um, molded and marked. Uh, you have your exhaust, there are different uh, types. You got the fish head exhaust, as well as the rounded exhaust, your horizontal stabs. You get some more of the cockpit parts here, some of the bulkheads, the seat, the cockpit floor itself. Very nice molding on the cockpit floor. Uh, the, um, the canvas bag with a leather uh, bag or boot around the control stick is nicely molded. And you also have your underwing uh, gun pods included. And uh, the barrels are very beautifully molded on this. Usually, come on, you can do it. Focus, focus. It is not wanting to focus. I wonder what is up with my camera. Anyways, can't really see it. The, the uh, gun barrels are very, very beautifully molded. All of the uh, cooling jacket detail on those kit, on the uh, the barrels, very, very nice. Uh, the insides of the cockpit, very minimal uh, details. I don't believe there are a lot of details in the actual kit. And sorry, in the real plane um, on this side of the fuselage, but. Uh, it did have doors, so there wasn't much mounted on the sides of the fuselage, but you do have a little bit of detail there. Make it pop with a little bit of weathering and whatnot. So that's the first sprue. 
And then uh, moving on, I will do the second sprue with the um, wings. So as I said, you've got your um, your wing components. Your lower wing is one single piece. Your upper wing is in two halves. You also have your pilot, some more of your cockpit details. Your spinners. It comes with two different style spinners uh, for a three-bladed or a four-bladed prop. So you get the two different spinners there. You get drop tanks. Uh, these, I believe, are your nose wheel um, bay sides. Uh, some more bits and pieces and, and bulkheads and whatnot. Radios. There's also a separate a separate exhaust set up here with 12 stacks per side, which in a V12 I guess would be two stacks per cylinder. So I'm not entirely sure uh, what's going on with that. I'd have to do some research and figure out why you have that many exhaust stacks on it. I'm sure there's an option for that in the kit. We'll look at the instructions and see what it says. Uh, but everything's nicely molded, beautifully engraved panel lines. The riveting um, is minimal. It's kind of where you'd expect to see it uh, to make the details pop, but it isn't everywhere. Um, the fabric on the a, uh, control surfaces uh, also nicely molded. As I said, for an early 2000s kit, uh, can't complain too much. It is a very well well engineered kit and the detail is nice and your final sprue has all of your other little bits so you've got more prop uh, blades here different style blades a wider paddle blade and a narrower uh, needle blade you get your landing gear wheels uh, both round and weight on wheels flat so you get the different options depending on the air whether the aircraft is going to be um, on the ground or not uh, you've got gear doors uh, in here um, landing gear bits and pieces, your main uh, landing gears here, your nose gears here. Um, interesting way they've laid it out. It isn't really um, symmetrical, I guess. It looks like it's... It looks like part of the main parts are flipped. But then there's also difference because of, of the different pieces. It's an interesting layout. It's It's not intuitive where everything is. So it does take a little bit to kind of look and figure out what you're looking at, but all the parts all you need to finish off are here. Little things like, you know, the radiators have some very nicely molded cross hatching on them. And I feel like a lot of these little pieces here are going to be a bit of a pain when you try to snip them off the sprues. They'll probably snap before they actually come off the sprues properly. So a bit of care will be needed to do that. But the wheels themselves are very nice. Uh, the detailing on the hubs are very, very nice. The inside of the gear doors have nice... Uh, detail as well. Like I said, a little bit of a black wash will just make all those details pop quite nicely. So overall the instruction, or the uh, the plastic I should say, is a, a very nice quality. Um, for such a small little kit there are quite a bit of parts included which is nice and there are quite a bit of options included and we'll see here in a second when we look at the instrument panel, I think instrument panel, the instructions, the different uh, options that are included in this kit. Let's just get everything back in the bag here. Uh, so moving on, the uh, clear parts. Clear parts come in a separate bag. It's actually a nice little Ziploc bag, so it's easy to take it in and out of the bag without losing anything. So your uh, uh, doors for the cockpit are molded clear, so you can paint them up and you will um, not lose any of the detail with the glass window. Uh, so you're not gluing a piece in and ruining a clear piece. It's all molded clear. Makes uh, a little bit easier to do. Your rear bulkhead, you got some um, gun sights, landing lights, and then the main canopy itself is included down here. I think the clear parts are quite quite clear. Yeah, there's very, very little distortion in that beautifully molded. Uh, no flaws at all. It's almost as if there's no glass there at all. It's a very, very high quality, very nice plastic. Um, that is a good, good canopy. And as I said, it does give you the option with the doors open, so you have a separate door if you want to display the cockpit, which I do plan on doing. Uh, so we'll go through the instructions first, and then we'll show you um, the rest of the little bits in the uh, inside the box. The instructions come. Uh, it's a slightly smaller size page, so it's a little bit different than um, most other kits. It's, it's slightly smaller, uh, but lots of information. You've got your standard write-up about the history of the aircraft type. Um, you've got your... Uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, technical stats here, and it's actually included for a number of different variants, so you can cross-reference between different versions uh, and see the difference, which is a nice feature, so it is always nice to be able to look across and, and, and see how it compares to other aircraft. So the building law process itself is pretty standard when it comes to aircraft kits. 
Uh, so step one here is the building of uh, the main cockpit. So you've got all your different uh, cockpit floor um, bits and pieces going in here. Um, your rear decking and your rear parts, the radio face, little instrument panels, uh, control rods and everything. There's some actually some cockpit details that are uh, decals that are included. I'll pull the decals out in a bit. We can go through that as well. And then moving down here to the instrument panel. Uh, the instrument panel itself has a lot of uh, film and photo etch included. And everything comes in the kit. All the photo etch, everything is included in this kit uh, right out of the box. Like I said, I'll go over uh, some of the different options here in a little bit and show you what uh, comes with it. But all your belts and instrument panels and everything else is all uh, done with photo etch and film. Um, and it has all the color collets there as needed. Uh, so then um, continuing with step one, it's a very long step one. I'm surprised I don't break it down to more steps. Uh, so the rest of step one here is also included things like the seat and um, the instrument panel gets glued into place, the um, nose gear, uh, bulkhead um, gets glued into place. There's even an area here where you need to remove uh, the lower legs of, I think, the forward bulkhead and it's replaced with photo etch. Um, some wires that go onto the radio is included. And then step two uh, is to gluing, gluing the uh, fuselage together with the cockpit in, in between. Uh, there's also some decals for the side of the fuselage. Um, and then there's a nose weight, I'll show you that in a sec, that's actually included in the kit. So here's where you put it inside the nose, uh, just above the wheel well. It actually looks like the bottom of the weight forms the roof of the nose well. Um, so that's a nice little feature, and uh, it's included. And then um, some more work in the cockpit, some you know, the throttle quadrant and some of the wires running out of the throttle quadrant are all included here. Uh, so photo etch, uh, step three is the wings. Um, so you have, for example, the uh, the radiators go at the front, uh, your tops of the wheel wells, uh, horizontal stabs, your nose um, piece. This is where I said earlier there's three different noses depending on what variant you build. So this one here shows you putting one of them on. But you can always, it looks like there's enough parts included in the kit that you can do multiple different versions of a P-39 uh, out of the box without having to do much work other than finding different decals. And then it also shows you to open up the uh, holes here if you want to do a bomb rack or, or belly tank. Uh, step four is the uh, exhaust uh, radiator. So you have to put in the little plastic bits with your PE faces for the exhaust, uh, the radiator exits. And then the doors are all photo etched as well. So nice uh, scale sized bits. Uh, and then your landing gear assembly. So again, uh, landing gear gets assembled. You have your choice between wheels, either with weight on or weight off the wheels. Um, some more photo etch bits that go in to fill in the wheel well detail and some of the landing gear uh, detail with the uh, actuating rods. And then step six, uh, installation of the underwing racks again. I think that is a, um, it's not an option. I think the holes are pre-drilled. You don't have to put them on. You can always fill the holes if you choose not to put the, the wing racks on, but uh, they are the, sorry, the wing bomb, uh, wing gun pods, uh, but they are included in the kit. And the belly rack, you have the choice of either the bomb or the fuel tank. And they give you, the again, the option. You can drill the holes if you want to or leave it off if you don't. Uh, step eight here, we have the installation of some details in the nose um, nose well. you got a little bit of a photo etch piece here for the back. And then there's some photo etch as well as a decal uh, that goes uh, in the rear of the nose gear bay. And then step nine, continuing with the nose gear, you have the assembly of the nose gear itself and the wheels. A lot of PE to fill that in and you've got some uh, struts and actuating rods and whatnot and then uh, the gear doors go in um, here and then step 10 which I think is nope not the final version step 10 is the installation of the canopy and the exhaust stacks again it only shows one style of exhaust stack but there was three different versions in the plastic so it definitely gives you the option to do multiple versions straight out of the box uh, pilots optional if you want and then the um, uh, antenna here as it clearly says is only for the US Russian Italy, so the French aircraft, which you'll see in a couple of minutes with the decals, do not include that antenna. And then the door, so there's quite a bit of decals and photo etch that goes on the inside of the door. And then they get glued in place, um, either open or closed. You have that option of however you want to do it. Uh, some PE and photo etch pieces here on the intake and some plastic on the nose. And then step 11, uh, the pitot tube as well, your prop, and it shows you how to assemble the different versions of prop, whether you go the four or the three bladed. Um, so again, it's included in the box uh, as an option. So that's the instructions. Uh, quite a lot going on in every step. I, I kind of would like to see 
Um, some of these steps broken down into smaller steps. There's no need to have, you know, the, the set the step that has you installing, for example, here, um, the pilot seat and the instrument panel be the same step that includes the nose gear doors. Those could be separated and you get a bit better flow um, and you have a lot less going on on the kit. Um, for example, like, you know, this, this, this part here where you're installing the wings, you could be doing all of the installation of the inner parts of the wing and the top part as one step and then the second step is mounting that to the fuselage with the tail. So you want to break it up a little bit. I find this can be overly confusing, especially if you need to do one thing before the other. Uh, you want to sh clearly show what step gets done. Like something like this, there's a whole lot going on in this step right here and it's very easy to lose track and miss a piece or just put stuff in the wrong order and get yourself stuck. So the only knock I would have to that is the, the instructions tend to be a slightly more complicated than they need to be. But at the end of the day, um, anybody with a bit of experience in building models could easily kind of figure out the easiest way to put it together. So we'll start to take a look at some of the um, markings. Um, so here you go on the back, it shows um, your paint callouts as well as your, your sprues and what you don't need to use. So you can clearly see how the extra, oh you can't, a little zoomed out, but the extra exhaust stacks are marked off as unused. Um, the, the upper uh, cowlings that we don't need are marked as unused. The blades here are marked as unused. These blades are marked as unused. So you can see all these different versions. There's a whole lot of these little bits and pieces here um, that are marked down as, as, as uh, unused. So there's definitely options in there to do some slightly different versions if you know what you're looking at. So if you can find the instructions for like a P39N or a P39D or an E or a P400, if you can find the instructions on, online for a different version, take a look and you might have the same plastic already in the box. If you want to do it, if you have decals, an aftermarket set of decals, you might be able to do a, a multiple of different versions based out of this one box. So I would definitely say um, take a look at what you want to find. Or for example, if you have a P40B or E or whatever you have out there and you ha you know um, want to do a Q version, you know, this, these set of instructions that I have here, which are also um, in my, uh, on my website. So if you head down into the bottom, I'll have a link to um, my website's section of the review, which includes all of my instructions and decals for these kits there. I'll put that down below in the comment, in the uh, description, and you guys can go to it, take a look, because if uh, these instructions help you build a queue out of your version, then by all means, take a quick look at it. So here we go with the decals. So you have your, your generic uh, stencil markings, so it shows you where all your stencils go. Um, you also have masking, um, so it includes the masks you need to do stuff. You, you have masks for your, your doors, your wheels, uh, your canopy. Uh, it also gives you the mask in order to mask off the um, wing walk area, so you can paint that on. Um, so it's quite a bit here. It gives you the uh, masking area for if you do, you'll see in a sec, the um, um, US version has a white tail. So it gives you a mask to paint uh, the section for the, um, the, the tail number inside of that. So it gives you quite a bit of different options. And then here it shows you uh, all the kits that apparently that Edward made at the time, which was just the P39 and the ME108 or the BF108 models and this shows the P400, two versions of the P400, the P39D, D, P39 and uh, P39D. So it shows a bunch of different product codes here like 8061, 8062, 8064 and this is 8065. So it looks like it, you do have the ability of making a multitude of different kits out of this one set of plastic if you have the right uh, decals and the right instructions. So again, if you're looking at doing multiple versions of this kit, take a look what's out on the internet, compare your instructions uh, you might be able to build the version you want out of the kit you have, even if it's not what's on the instructions. Uh, so there is a total of four different markings available in this boxing. Uh, so the first one, unfortunately, again, uh, a minor complaint I have with this is it is not full color um, instructions. It's just simply two color instructions. It would have been nice to have full color instructions uh, to show uh, a little bit better what colors you're supposed to be building. Um, but uh, you do have uh, four different markings. So this first one here is for, I believe, uh, Italy. Again, I'm trying to just base off of what it's the description uh, because I can't tell looking at a roundel what country it is. But this first one is uh, for an uh, Italian aircraft from 1945. 
I'll have to compare color callouts here to see exactly what I'm looking at, but I would guess it's probably olive drab over a neutral gray, which it is. So olive drab, neutral gray, uh, some markings on the tail, looks like a little stallion. Uh, it's got an, a, uh, a name on the nose. Uh, it's in Italian, so I couldn't really tell you what it looks like. Uh, the spinner's white and the blades are usually black as usual. Uh, so the next aircraft is a French Air Force bird and it is the exact same paint scheme, olive drab over neutral gray. Uh, you've got the French flag on the tail with the aircraft number. Uh, your spinner is yellow on the French bird uh, and then you have your standard um, French markings. Not, I mean, I shouldn't say standard, but um, yeah, your standard round owls, and then you've got some uh, pen squadron pennants and aircraft markings and whatnot on the fuselage. And this one does have the four-bladed prop, uh, whereas all the other ones have the three-bladed prop. And then moving on, the American version, again, olive drab over a neutral gray. This one also has white. Uh, this is probably the one that I am going to end up building. Uh, so it's got the white tail uh, with the white leading edges. I believe this is from a training squadron based stateside in 1944, based off of the little bit of information I can read here. Um, so it wouldn't be a combat bird, but it would be uh, still interesting with the, the white. And then it's got a whole bunch of, of writing in yellow across the nose on the side of the fuselage. So it looks like just a bunch of different people named it um, as different units went through and different uh, schools and whatnot went through. But um, interesting uh, bird. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting this one done. And that scheme. So a lot of white. The spinner is yellow on this one. So it's kind of nice to have a slightly different uh, look to it. And then finally we have a Russian bird, which again, <laughs> you know, pretty standard here. Olive drab over neutral gray. Uh, the spinner on this particular bird is blue. Uh, it doesn't really state what color blue it is. It does give you a couple of call outs uh, for colors uh, companies over here, but it has a blue spinner as well as a blue uh, tail tip. Um, and then uh, your stars are, are a little bit different because they would have painted over the American roundel. So the red star goes on top of a blue roundel, which gives it a slightly different look, uh, which is cool if, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, the fuselage is different. If I was going to be, because we know the red star was painted over the American roundel, if I was going to be building this aircraft, I would effectively um, make it look like I painted out um, the American roundel in green and then put the star over it or I would have put the star over the American roundel on the um, fuselage just to make it look a little bit you know you, you, you know it was done that way so I would have I would do it. it's not called out like that but I think a slightly different shade of green uh, just a slightly darker shade of green uh, painted around here and then put the roundel on it looks like they out painted out the American roundel put the star on that was a very common uh, step that the Russians did when they got lend -lease aircraft so that's basically this instructions uh, for painting, four different color uh, aircraft schemes you can do. Um, as I said, uh, the painting guide is here. Um, it gives you call outs for Tamiya, Humbrol, Revell, Testers, and Guns. Uh, so that is nice that you have that uh, the, the Testers call out. You can compare that to uh, your Testers paint list and from there you can convert to a number of other different uh, paints. And the fact that they give you the call outs for five different companies I mean it's going to be a lot easier to convert this into a company if you don't use these five. If they just give you one, like just Tamir or just Humbrol, it's a little harder to convert those into other companies. But having five, it's going to be a lot easier to convert these into different companies, paint lines, if you have a different one than that. So that is the um, painting guide instructions. So I'll quickly show you here what else you have. So you've got your photo etch. As I said, this all comes in the kit. None of this is extra. But you've got all your photo etch bits for the irradiated different panels, landing... Uh, seat belt, landing gear, hoses, all that kind of stuff, as well as the film uh, piece for your instrument panel. Uh, they also include uh, vinyl masks, as I said, so you have all the masks to do all your canopy masking, as well as your um, um, walkways and your tail for the round bird, uh, the white, uh, the, the tail markings for the white US aircraft, as well as uh, wheel maskings. And you get your weight, your um, nose weight, which is a good, nice hunk of lead, uh, which helps keep the aircraft on its nose wheel. That's a nice touch. A lot of these aircraft don't include the nose weight, and you run into many issues later on trying to get the right amount of weight um, to uh, get it to sit on its nose. And you're guessing a lot of times because you have to put the weight in early in the build, but then you don't know where the CFG is going to be early on because of all the bits of plastic you haven't glued on yet and you guess and sometimes it's way too much weight 
and it's too much stress on the landing gear, and at other times it's not enough weight, and the plane still tail sits. So it's nice when they include it because they've already done the research for you, and there's no guessing. Uh, just give me one second. I mean, it's going to be a second for you, literally. It's going to be a few minutes for me. i got to dig out the instruction, uh, the decal sheet. So just hold on a sec here. I'll have the decal sheet out, and I'll show you that. Okay, so here we go. This is the decal sheet you get with the um, with the kit. So as I said, you have your um, your French, your Italian, your American, and your Russian um, decals. Uh, you also have your tail numbers. All your stencils are over here. So everything you need to complete the model here is included. Um, you got your these are your pendants for the French. You got your markings here for the Russian. Uh, I believe that's from the French. That the white here is the Italian bird. Um, so you get quite a bit of different in here, all this Fresno, California stuff, Betty Lou, Stokes. These are all the American training bird with the um, white tail. So as I said, you can see how you've got the white, um, the blue background for the American roundel and the Russian star goes over top of it. So as I said, if I was going to be doing this, um, I would also be painting it out to make it look like it was overlaid on the fuselage as well. But other than that, these are standard Edward decals. They're printed by Cartograph, so they're um, very high quality. I don't see any issues with laying these down on the model. Um, I've used Edward decals before and they go down very nicely so um, not too much to worry about um, with the Edward decals. So there you go, that is the um, Italeri, sorry not the Italeri, the Edward. The Edward uh, P39 Profa Pack Kit P39Q. Um, being a 20 year old kit, um, I am very impressed with this. It is still easily the best P39 out there. Um, I, as obviously, I have not built this kit yet. My gut tells me that this might be a slightly finicky uh, kit at times. Um, uh, keep your eye out. Uh, this is going to be one of the next kits I build. Uh, so you will very quickly see, uh, not only will you start to see this pop up in my uh, What's on My Desk monthly updates, um, but in about six months' time when this is finished, I will have the time lapse build up there uh, and when I do get the time-lapse build finished I will put the time-lapse uh, build link down below in the description so if you're seeing this um, months and months and months after I've actually filmed it uh, just go to check down below in the uh, description and you will see a link to my uh, time-lapse build of this and I'll go over some of the issues I have while I'm actually building it so thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time Thank you for watching guys, and as always, if you are interested in any of the content you see, you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com. Uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site. And if you're interested in any of this content, uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much, and see you guys next time.